Wow, hey, this is my first time doing Facebook Live. So I'm not exactly sure how everything is supposed to pop up on the screen, but if it's anything similar to Periscope, which I do do often, hopefully I'll see who's coming on. But hey guys, I was inspired to get on here tonight, specifically based on something that I read on Instagram. I also just posted it on my page and so hello to the viewers that are coming on I can't see who you are so unlike Periscope I generally can say hey to everybody as they come on but I read this quote and it said it's not enough to do things right you must also do the right things smart people fail every day because they execute flawlessly on the wrong goals I'm gonna read it one more time it's not enough to do the right things. I'm sorry, it's not enough to do things right. You must also do the right things. Smart people fail every day because they execute flawlessly on the wrong goals. So I read this quote and I read it a few times because I was like, man, I'm gonna take this a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper. And it stuck with me and it really inspired me to get on here on Facebook Live and talk to you guys about something that I know is a pain point for a lot of people that I talk to. And also it was a strong pain point in my life. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, I now work in charter school management. I also have a nonprofit organization. I've written a book. And it took me a while on my journey to really find out how to say yes to Carlisha's true desires, how to say yes to finding my own voice and my own path. And I realized that I spent a lot of my life navigating down this path of what I thought everyone else wanted for me to do and wanted for me to be. And so now as people ask me that big question of, you know, what does it mean for me to live life on purpose? How do I make the best decision for me? I find that there's a lot of people that are walking through the steps of how to get to success based upon what they saw in someone else's life. So if the process was go get this internship, go get a law degree, go work here, and then that's when you get to this point of arrival, many times we're building our lifelong plans off the back of what societal norms are or off of someone else's story. And how often are we caught up in the weeds of what it's supposed to look like versus going out there for what we really want. And so I'll tell you guys a little bit about me and I tell this story to inspire people to take that jump to actually apply for the job to actually go after the dream to run towards it and so i was mentioning to you that i work in charter school management i'm an executive director and i distinctly remember years ago it was back in 2013 um, when i was talking to my supervisor at the time and i was telling him how my dream was to be a charter school executive director i was a teacher i had gone through teach for america a non-traditional pathway had my master's degree had worked abroad and done some work but came back Back into the classroom and I knew I had a passion for education but I wanted to serve in a different capacity and so I left that teaching position they were like well you can do this this you can teach another grade then you'll do this fellowship then in three years you'll do this fellowship then you can be an assistant principal a principal then you can be an executive director it was this long stretched out path and I thought you know maybe that is what I have to do maybe that's the path for me but what's incredible is that I left that position I left teaching and I went to another job in education and then I found out about a principal position that was opening up and this position I felt like was going to be a great opportunity for me but there was something about it that didn't settle well with me and as I went through the interview process they were excited about me and wanted to learn more and I'm looking forward to the opportunity but God told me no that this was not the opportunity for me and so what's crazy is that I'm sitting here I knew I wanted a new job I knew I wanted to do something different but it wasn't it wasn't a fit and so I sent this email reluctantly saying you know I appreciate this opportunity but I'm not going to apply for this job I'm gonna withdraw myself from the interview process and ironically I had talked to someone on the phone in my phone interview and we had built this relationship and rapport with one another and she emailed me and she said you know it was great to connect with you I know you withdrew your application 
But we are looking for people like you in our organization. I hope that you'll keep us in mind. Literally, you guys, two weeks later, an executive director position opened up. And as I read the qualifications that were required for someone in that position, I was just like, um, that's not me. I don't have five years of administrative experience. I don't have a master's degree in education. My degree is in public administration for my master's. I didn't line up. But something told me to apply anyways. I put my heart and my soul into that application, y'all. I wanted this job more than I've ever wanted a position in my life. And as I went into the interview and as I continued to chase after this dream, it was realized. I mean, I look now and this, this month celebrates two years and one month since I've been working as an executive director. And in this position, I've worked with three different schools, opened up two schools. I mean, God has just really proven this path for me. Now, have I always had all the answers? No. Has it been easy? Absolutely not. But it makes me think about this quote. When it says, you know, it's not enough to do things right, you must also do the right things. Smart people fail every day because they execute flawlessly on the wrong goals. I could have been spending these past two years executing flawlessly on someone else's goals, on someone else's path in life. But I guess I pose this question to you guys when you're thinking about opportunities and when you're thinking about what are the right goals that you should be pursuing, what lane should you be in right now? The question is, you know, what do you want to be remembered for? What is connected to your core values, to what you truly believe in? And as you're making decisions, ask yourself the question of, does this opportunity put me closer to being that woman, to being that man, to growing in my business? And my second question to you is, what are you saying no to as you say yes to this? A lot of us millennials get caught up in the rush and the money and the glamour and what opportunities can bring into our lives. But it's really important for us to step back and ask, am I happy? Does this fulfill me on a deeper level? Am I really pushing towards a memorable path in my life? We can get so consumed with, I'm going to run this race in my 20s. I'm going to grind it out in my 30s so I can shine in my 50s. But you guys, life is so short. And I really record this video today because I'm so inspired by my sister's life. She passed away at the age of 38 years old from cancer. And she just really pushed and inspired me to live in the now to do the things that were on my heart, to live in my truth and to push towards my dreams and to have that bold type of faith. You know, we do not know the days, the hours, the minutes, but the last thing that I want for my life is to be called home, living a life that was not the purpose that God had intended for me. I don't wanna be the person who's executing flawlessly on the wrong goals. I don't want to be the person that reaches the end of my life and realizes that I've been successful and the things that don't really matter. And I don't want that for you either. So I encourage you to ask yourself these two questions as you're contemplating opportunities that stir up in your heart and in your life. And number one is what do you want to be remembered for? Does this job, does this relationship, does this new venture that you're taking on put you closer to being the man or woman that is going to be living in that legacy. And my second question, as you prepare to say yes to opportunities, yes to relationships, yes to entrepreneurial efforts, what are you saying no to as you go ahead and you say yes? So I'm wishing you all happiness, joy, love, and peace on your journey as you're building lasting legacies as leaders whose influence will be felt around the world. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining, and thank you, Tiffany, for celebrating my two years, and thanks, Stisha, great to see you on here. So I have officially done my first Facebook Live. It was kind of fun, so I will, I will surely do this again. Thanks for the love, you guys. I guess it's likes here on Facebook Live. I'll talk to you later.